welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Alban. I'm a solution engineer at Soda. I've been there for about six months. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about how to get started with data testing and data observability. Uh, so the initial plan here was to do uh, like a live demo and a workshop. Unfortunately, that doesn't work with the streaming thing, but you're very welcome to see a live demo at the booth later on. So quickly, in terms of the agenda, I have one or two slides just introducing Soda and who we are and what we focus on. And then um, quickly going over the platform and the deployment model and the different components and how they fit together. So the demo part is going to be more of a teaser since <laughs> we weren't able to do this live. Uh, but at least I'll show you kind of what you can expect from the demo in the booth later on. And we have a special demo where there might be some Belgian beers at some point this uh, later today. And then some guidance around getting started. And if we have time for it, we do have uh, some goodies on the roadmap that I would like to take you through. But starting from the beginning, uh, the founders of Soda. So Soda is about three and a half, four years old. Uh, it was founded by these two fine gentlemen, uh, Martin and Tom. Uh, Martin had a background from Calibra, where he was one of the earlier employees. And then he met up with Tom, who's also worked with Calibra, but on their workflow piece. So they got together and really wanted to focus on data quality and data observability. So our mission statement, if you will, is that we want to be a data observability and collaboration platform in order to discover, prioritize, and resolve data issues and silent data issues. And the way we do that is by focusing on four different areas. So starting from the left here, we have automated monitoring. So what, that, what does that mean? It means that you can take Soda and just point it to a database, and we'll, be, we'll figure out as much as we can automatically. So these are things that does not require any specific knowledge about the data. So that would be things like time series anomaly detection on row counts, or data freshness, or schema changes. So uh, the idea there that is that you can apply that very broadly uh, on your different data, data sets, and then we can figure this out for you and alert when there is a problem. The second one here uh, is data testing. So now we're more in data engineering land. Uh, so that means that you want to test the data as part of a pipeline. So it could be before and after a transformation, for example. And the, the primary component here is something called Soda SQL that you can um, add as a part of your data pipeline uh, or t as a scheduled job or just when you're really going to consume the data. But the primary audience for this is the data engineer or the analytics engineer. Also, in this part of our offer thing, uh, offering, everything is open source. So it's very accessible, and you can easily extend it to fit your needs in case there is a specific data source that we don't support at the moment. The third one is around validations. So this, uh, this is not for the data engineer primarily. This is more for data consumers or data product owners and empower them with the capability to create test cases and validations uh, that could be executed without having to involve the data engineer. Because what we hear a lot from our customers is that data engineers, uh, they, they get to spend a lot of their time fixing things, and if you can enable the, the the person who actually want this done to do a lot of it by themselves, that's a great time saver. The fourth thing here is actions. So the previous three has been very centered around detecting issues, finding them. And actions is more around data resolution. So what does uh, data quality issue resolution? So what does that mean? So it means that once we've identified an issue, we need to be able to keep track of it so that someone will address it. And once it's addressed, we can mark it as done. So Soda Actions for us is more of a roadmap item, and I'll go into a bit more detail around that towards the end of the presentation. Uh, but we're looking to start working on that in, in Q4 this year. Uh, but it's going to be a simple if this then that type config so that if there's a data quality issue, you could uh, create a ticket in Jira or PagerDuty, for example. And just to give you an idea of where we can play, so looking at the green dots here, that would indicate somewhere that we could be part of your process. So first, in ingestion, you can actually point Soda directly at a stream, at a Kafka topic. And then before and after transformation, for example, then that's typically done by a data engineer. And then we have the last piece where you test for data fitness. That could be done uh, by a data product owner, for example, or uh, someone building a BI report that wants to validate the data quality before they actually use the data. So that's a very brief intro to, to the company. 
And then I'm going to take you through the platform, um, the deployment model. So uh, there's two main components to Soda. Uh, first, we have our developer tools there, uh, the green ones. Uh, those are all open source. So we have three open source projects uh, at the moment, where Soda SQL is by far the most evolved one and the widely used one. So Soda SQL is essentially a Python application that you can configure via YAML file. And then these properties within the YAML file will be translated into highly optimized SQL that will execute on your data source. So there's never any need to move data from wherever it is to into us. We will work where the data resides. And then once that is done, we will collect data quality metrics and evaluate test cases. And once we have them, we will upload them to Soda Cloud. So Soda Cloud becomes that single pane of glass for data quality across your organization. Uh, it also adds additional functionality, um, like time series anomaly detection, for example, or a change over time. And in addition to Soda SQL, uh, we do have uh, significant support for Spark. So our Spark support is twofold. Uh, one is that we provide a Spark dialect as part of Soda SQL, and the other one, Soda Spark, that allows you to interact directly with Spark data frames. Uh, but it works exactly the same way. You have um, you have a YAML file that you configure, and you tell it which metrics to collect, like min, max, averages, standard deviation, that sort of thing. And then you build test cases in there as well, and those are being uploaded to Soda Cloud. There's an additional one there, uh, Soda Kafka or Soda Streaming. Uh, this one is not as built out as the rest of the tooling, so this is more in a PUC state. Uh, but we collaborated with one of our customers in order to get a, a first PUC out the door, so to speak. But what that is, is essentially a Flink application that you would point to a Kafka topic, over, and over a specific time frame, you will collect data quality metrics and then upload that to Soda Cloud in the same way you would do with the, with the other two. So Soda Cloud becomes that central and single pane of glass for data quality. So what we do is that we, score, we store the metrics and the test results so you can compare them over time. So for example, if you want to say, like, how is our invalid social security numbers? How is that evolving over time? And then you can see, uh, see a diagram there, and you can set alerts and warning to share that via email or chat. So as of today, we provide a native Slack integration. So whenever there's a data quality issue, you could post this to your, uh, to your team channel in Slack. We are extending that also throughout Q4 to, I know Teams is, is, is something that's requested a lot in, in, that, in that bucket. Then in addition to this, in, in addition to the email and, and, and chat integration, we do want to be able to fit into an existing ecosystem of tools. So one of the, the most common ones is data catalogs, right? because you have your data stewards that has uh, a view of all the metadata, uh, but what's missing really is an indication of the data quality for that data. So our strategy is to integrate with as many data catalogs as we can. So today, out of the box, we integrate natively to Alation and to Calibra. And the experience there is that you'll see the normal things as you would consume as a data steward, but then you can augment that with data quality metrics. And that also helps with things like lineage, for example. So you can see that, OK, if this data set is affected, uh, what is the downstream, uh, the downstream systems and reports that will be affected by this one? So for now, our strategy is not to provide data lineage uh, ourselves, but to integrate with solutions that already provides that. Then when it comes to BI integrations, um, there's two ways to do that. Uh, so the first one is operating directly on the open source tools. So when you run a Soda scan, what you will end up with is a, a Python object that holds all the results. So with that, you could do whatever you want to do in Python. So you can write that to another table or upload it, dump it as a JSON file somewhere. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. And then you can point your BI tools to that. Um, in addition to that, we are also offer a reporting API from Soda Cloud. So you can get the data out of there and then, again, drop it somewhere, and then you can create your own dashboards if you're not happy with the ones that we provide. Then, um, so, so one thing to note, right? So going back to Soda SQL for a bit, it's passive in the sense that it needs something to invoke it. So that's typically an Airflow, uh, or you have some sort of external scheduler. 
Uh, but what we are going to do, uh, we have done, <laughs> is to provide something that we call a soda agent. So it's essentially a wrapper around Soda SQL uh, that will allow you to do things like uh, scheduling. So the way this works is that um, the, the data engineer or anyone who wants to will provide these YAML files that describes which metrics to collect and which test cases to execute. And then they can simply push that to Git. And then the Soda agent will be looking at that Git repo, bring the YAML files down to, to the Soda agent, and then execute them on a schedule that's defined uh, beforehand. And then that could run on a daily, hourly, how often you, you want to run it. And then the metrics and results are aggregated within Soda Cloud, where we can do uh, change over time and, and time series anomaly detection. So just a few more details on Soda Cloud. Uh, so we've, uh, that, that is that single pane of glass where you can do intelligent alerting, uh, the time series anomaly detection, which can be applied on any metric that you collect uh, from, from Spark or from your SQL engine. Uh, there's also a, we also offer a free trial. So if you want to get started, you can just sign up and get started there by yourself. Then we have Soda SQL, so it's probably hard to see there, but that's an example of the, of the YAML file that you use to configure the metrics that you collect and the test cases. So by default, we look at things like valid, invalid, missing, um, min, max, averages, standard deviation, and uniqueness, histograms, that sort of thing. Uh, and what Soda SQL does is that it takes these properties and it translates that into highly optimized SQL that's specific to the data source that you're using. So like, it would be different if you're using BigQuery versus Redshift, for example. And we take care of that for you. Uh, it's also possible to, uh, we try to provide as many of these out of the box metrics as we can, uh, but there's always going to be customer specific use cases that are, are so unique that it wouldn't make sense for us to bake them into the, to the project. And what you can do there is that you can simply provide a SQL query, and then you can type that as failed rows, for example, and then you can still alert and work on that in the UI later on. So uh, the demo will be, <laughs> will be, will be somewhat theoretical um, here. But uh, if you come to the booth later, what I'm going to show, what we typically show you is that we'll start in data engineering land, uh, working with Soda SQL, how to configure it, how to connect it to a data source. And then you perform a scan. So the scan is the piece that collects the metrics and evaluates the test cases. Then that gets uploaded to Soda Cloud, where they can be reviewed, customized, or you can actually create tests directly from here. And when you do that, what happens is that the next scan will, the next time the scan will run, regardless of where it runs, it will pick up these changes and then execute that as part of uh, an Airflow DAG or however you want to run it. Uh, then the alerting. So um, that's where you configure who should receive this, uh, either via email or uh, via the, the native Slack integration. So getting started. Um, so simplest way is to just go to soda.io and you click sign up and then we provide a free trial for 20, 20 days so you can just go and, and have a take it for a spin and it also provides you with a really good getting started guide that will take you through how to set up soda sql and how to work with that then uh, we so if you want to evaluate soda i mean we're here to help the team uh, the team and i so there's a couple of few things that you can do there. Uh, you can either, we can set up a custom demo for your organization where we can take one of your use cases and then build it up and then showcase that to a wider audience. Or we have, since, since Soda SQL is uh, completely open source, and then you have this cloud composition with a free trial, it's really easy to get started on your own. And what we can do there in order to help is that we have, um, we have a very vibrant uh, Slack community. So if you want to see what other customers or uh, other members of the community are doing, this is a great resource. So we'll, we'll, we monitor this pretty much 24-7, and our senior engineer and project leads for the different open source, source projects are there as well. And then if, you're, if that is interesting enough, we could also do a uh, proof of concept and, and, and do a more formal engagement together. So five minutes. Uh, just wanted to give you some highlights in terms of what's coming down the line. 
So to begin with, uh, if we look at what we've accomplished this year, it's quite significant. So in Q2 uh, this year, we were able to provide time series anomaly detection, self-service monitoring, uh, the Slack integration, and a, a revamp of the Soda SQL docs. And uh, the last quarter, uh, we, during the summer, we had a strong focus on enterprise features. So authorization, uh, that means that you can limit the access to certain data sets to certain groups or to certain individuals, so it's not visible to, to everyone in the organization. We also built out our single sign-on support. Uh, so that's been validated uh, against Okta and Azure AD. But it's SAML2 based, so it should work across most of the providers. Uh, then another major thing is uh, Soda Spark. Uh, so we collaborated uh, very closely with HelloFresh for the implementation of this, uh, and we had the, da the data frame launch was uh, was I think a month ago. So so that one's up and running now, which is really exciting. And the schema monitoring is coming, I think, this week or beginning of next one, so that you can detect if automatically detect if someone drops a column uh, or adds one or changes the data types, it will be automatically uh, updated when that happens. And then uh, the reporting API, which is a way to uh, get data out of, out of SOTA and be able to, um, to, to measure adoption as well. So, Q4 is going to be very busy for us as well. Uh, so, so probably the biggest thing is that we're going to double down on, um, on our open source tooling to really provide like, key features that we've discovered talking to, to our customers and, 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 and to the community in general. So to be able to do things like row count comparisons, so you can, you can do that within a data set today, but across data sets, that's not possible as of today, but that's something that we're going to release in Q4. So you can compare, like if you're doing, running your data pipeline, so you can compare row counts or any other metric after the fact. So that's a very, uh, very powerful feature. And also do referential integrity checks. So if you get a value, it needs to be in some other table to be valid. Uh, that will also be provided with a simple uh, configuration, adding a simple property to the YAML configuration. Uh, and then uh, DBT. So if you know, DBT has some data testing capabilities, uh, which is great. Uh, and there are some overlap in terms of what we provide with our open source tooling. Uh, so our strategy there is that we want to enable th uh, companies and, and organizations using DBT today to actually be able to send that data directly to Soda Cloud. So you get this uh, single pane of glass again for data quality, regardless if it's executed by DBT or by us. And then extend on the catalogs integrations. We will work with Amundsen and Data Hub primarily in Q4. And then Q1 uh, next year, that will be a lot of focus on the SOTA action, so the data quality issue resolution part of things. Uh, so that will be like an if this, then that type of configuration. And here we'll utilize Tom's experience working, uh, developing workflows for, I think, 10, 20 years. The other thing is extending SOTA, uh, SOTA alerts, so you'll be able to snooze them and provide API extensions and then also in increase the number of integrations uh, that we will be able to provide, like the Teams integration, for example. And one thing that's key uh, is also data fitness dashboards. So on a higher level, be able to get like an indication of the data quality uh, for a full data set without going into the specifics. So more get an overview, like what does my completeness look like? What does my consistency look like? What does the timeliness look like? So combine a set of, uh, a set of monitors and also being able to suggest additional ones um, in order to get higher coverage of your data. And then also extending on the search and filter data sets. So only one minute left, so I'm going to just give you a few screenshots of what's coming. So first of all, the schema monitoring, where you can detect, as I mentioned, if something is add, removed, or changed, being able to detect that directly. Uh, and here is a screenshot of the data fitness dashboard. Well, you see completeness, consistent, uniqueness, and so on. So you get a traffic-like type indication of what's going on. So where to kind of put your effort. And then annotations. This goes back to the collaboration piece as well, that 
uh, if you detect an issue, how are you going to collaborate on that? So being able to uh, annotate that with a note so that two people does not have to look at it. Because we believe that building, uh, building great data products is a team sport, so this is, this is a strong focus for us. And then uh, issues and tasks, so being able to group alerts into one thing, and then you can share that uh, to, to a Jira or a PagerDuty or wherever you want to put it. That was it for me. Thanks, thanks so much for, uh, for paying attention. It was really great to see all you guys.